Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Blade Showcase for Zed Blade Chronicles 2. And today we have, in my opinion, the most effective bitball healer, and possibly healer overall, in Zed Blade Chronicles 2. And the thing about Boreas, what really makes him stand out, is that he has insane utility, and you'll actually find that when you're going through his. Uh, affinity charts. Not to mention that if you unlock this guy early, then you're in luck because he is the easiest blade in the entire game for maxing out the affinity charts, or at least most of the parts of the affinity chart. Obviously, there is one trust wall that you have to finish, but once you finish that, though, it's really, really good. So, uh, one of the main things you want to look out for in his affinity charts is his three passives. These are all extremely useful passives. So, the first one is Tasty Snack. This is kind of like uh, Percival's Eater of Men, but instead of dealing a large amount of healing to the one person, it's a decent amount of healing for the entire party. And the thing is, though, again, like I said earlier, you can max out the affinity chart really fast. Like, really, really fast. All you have to do is just invest in money, and if your talents aren't fully developed, it'll help you develop your talents. It's really good. So, once you max it out and you kill an enemy, it's 60% HP for the entire party. That's really amazing, especially in fights that have a lot of ads in them. Also, you have Look Out. Uh, getting max affinity is actually quite easy overall, particularly if you like to use Hunter's Chemistry like I do. This increases your evasion rate by a whopping 45%, which is always welcome. Like, there's, there's no reason to not want this. It's, it's just more evasion. That's what you want. Like, the less times you're getting hit, the less you have to heal yourself. But let me just tell you right now, before we actually get into that, he has amazing heals too. So there's also Twang. Twang is a 50% chance of knockback when attacked by an enemy. Like, it's, it's free knockback if you accidentally draw aggro. That being said, Boreas is a healer, so you might not necessarily make a lot of use of this. But, like, in the opening stages of a fight, when your tank is still trying to generate a, um sort of a uh, a good amount of aggro, then this is really going to become helpful because you're going to knock them back as they attack you, meaning they will spend less time attacking you, you will spend less time aggroing them, and that's just going to make your fight as, as smooth as possible, as fast as possible. And of course there's also the, uh, the passives over here, but let's also look at his specials. His specials are all quite good. Now, the level 1 special is pretty nice because it's critical damage dealt HP. Uh, getting criticals isn't that bad. Most of the time you would end up getting criticals based on how you build yourself. Like if you increase your critical rate, you could totally use it on Boreas. And it, it, it's self-heal. Same thing goes for the level 2. It's also a self-heal, but this time it's not based on criticals and just based on overall damage. Still really, really good. But the big thing is his level 30. The level 30 is so good. So the thing about level 30s is that when you use it... Uh, and you're building orbs, and he's the last person, then you're going to deal a whopping amount of damage when you have this attack going down. It's, um, most of the time, this will be a good safety cooldown, and being a bitball character, he already has a group heal in the ability, in the, uh, in the form of healing circle. So, that's kind of the thing about Boreas, is that he has great sustainable healing, and the thing is, for people that have been watching my videos prior to this showcase, uh, I have actually been using Boreas quite often. He is a perfect fit for any healing setup, and even if it's not on a pure healer like Nia, he can still work well on Rex, because the thing about Boreas is that he also gives you a passive increase to HP, so that's all well and good. Now, in terms of the auxiliary cores, having something such as, like, um, maybe, like, more heals, you might want to consider getting into critical rates, if that's what you want to do. I mean, I'm personally going to give myself a critical rate just because it's nice to have that ability when I'm doing the combo one, or the, uh, the driver, uh, sorry, blade combo one. All very, very good stuff. He just has all the makings of a fantastic healer, and, again, like I said earlier, so easy to max out. All you have to do is just unlock the warehouse in Argentum Goldmyth, so that you can, um, yeah, pay 100,000 gold, and then you open up that area where Shiva's piggy bank is, but instead, you use Boris as a food, sh food stash, and then that'll help you bring up his affinity chart levels, and then you just have to start spamming pouch items to get the rest of this stuff. It's very easy. It takes, like, half an hour to get to this level. Really, really good stuff. So we're going to go ahead, cut the video, and we're going to show you what this guy's capable of. Alright, so here we are at the Brigand's Hideout, and we're going to be fighting against one of the easier super bosses of the Xenoblade 2 post-game. 
The reason why I'm going to be going over here is because partway through the actual fights, he's going to summon a bunch of adds, and that'll help show off what exactly the effectiveness of the tasty snack passive that Boreas has can do. One other thing about this particular fight is that it's great for people that are just starting out in the post game, they're not sure what to do, and uh, feel free to come here if you want to go ahead and farm your legendary cores and auxiliary cores. This is going to be a very good place to start off for people that are still a little bit intimidated by the higher super bosses, but it's definitely a good place to start. Now, the team that I'm using right now is the same one that I've been using for the uh, the Nim showcase. So it's gonna be Dromark, Nim, and Boreas. Boreas fits with this team very well due to the fact that, like, when you're going for the third stage blade combo, it really comes in handy just due to the fact that um, it's a full heal for everybody as well as high damage. So we're gonna wait for that to finish, and we're gonna start off with our first Earth Orb. We're probably not even going to do the chain attacks. I, I know I say that often, and I say that I don't care about doing the chain chain attack, but in comparison to all the other super bosses in the post game, this one has probably the least amount of HP. So that's another thing to look forward to as well. Now, in terms of building another one, I would like very much for Tora to switch over to the um, switch over to an Ice type or Poppy QC Pie. So there we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to Dromark. My plan here is to build a level two. And then, uh, once all my cooldowns are ready, I'm gonna switch into Nim, burn all those cooldowns, and then go straight into Boreas for the level 3 combo. Now, he's gonna go ahead and call the allies. If you want to farm this, I would recommend actually waiting for uh, two water types and a dark type. That's gonna be very, very helpful, because that's gonna seal the reinforcements. However, because we don't have that, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and start spamming away at our attacks. Now, I actually made a mistake. I got a little distracted by looking at all these guys, but we should be okay because we have our um, driver arts going on. Actually, if I launch, that should extend my time, and that should be more than enough time for us to get Boreas. Once we have Boreas, we'll have a bit of a clutch heal, and we'll be able to heal the entire party. Now, I'm going to go ahead and direct the other team, to, the rest of the team, to go ahead and focus on that while I go turn my sights to the main boss. And here we go, Dead of Winter. This is going to be an AoE hit for everybody. This is going to be a big heal. Not to mention that if anyone does die from this attack, they're also going to get a 60% HP uh, regain. It's going to be very useful. So okay, so that's going to be that. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to maybe a Ground Caterpillar to help out a little bit. S probably switch over to Boreas. Again, the thing about Boreas, he has great team heals. Really, really great team heals in the form of his level 3 combo and his healing circle. Very spammable. I highly recommend pairing him up on the same team as a twin ring such as Dromark. If you're not using Nia and you have Boreas on that one, feel free to use any of the other ones. But in this particular case, though, if you want to have like the very best heals, I would highly recommend this on, on Nia. It's just it's too good to pass up. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and build another, lo another level 3, and we're going to go for another round of a full heal for the team all that heal. By the way, so in terms of my uh, accessories or pouch items, I know that I usually repeat the same thing over and over again, but I'm currently using the Victory Smoothie because it helps increase the cooldowns, oh sorry, it helps decrease the cooldowns of my of my driver arts. As well, um, th th he is not as driver combo uh, centric as say Poppy QT or Wolfric, so I didn't have to bother with the Plumber Escape game, but if you're, you know, general rule, Plumber Escape game, as well as, uh, I believe there's another, like, char-grilled bird uh, pouch item that I'll have to look into. I'll probably feature that in the very next one. And, uh, yeah. So, again, there's all these ads coming in here. Tasty treats. It's gonna be a full heal for everyone. This, it's very easy. Very easy to do this encounter, especially if you have Boris, but even if you don't, he's still no sweat. It's just, you have to look out for that. But, if you don't want to deal with the ads, if you don't want to deal with the reinforcements, then I recommend uh, doing a level 1 and level 2 water driver combo, and then finishing that off with a dark tide or a level 3 or a level 3 combo. The reason why is because that will seal the reinforcements, and that's something that you might want to take advantage of if you feel that you're, you're underleveled or you're um, too squishy. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do the Cyclone. The thing about being a wind type is that you can easily build up not just wind orbs, but electric orbs as well. 
So, we're not, again, we're not going to bother with the orbs this time around, but that's just a bit of a heads up for you guys. Another thing we can do is that, again, if we want to go for group heals, like I switch into Dromark, go for another healing halo, then spam all my arts over here. And, yeah, that's a launch. And that's going to be Curtain Call for Reeking Douglas. It's a really, really easy encounter. Again, highly recommend it for people that are starting out. And definitely good if all you want to do is just get some legendary cores, see where that takes you. Even if you just get like a 4 crown common blade, I think that'll still serve you very well. But yeah, Boreas is, in my mind, the most effective bitball healer. Like, if you want to get into healing and you don't know exactly how to, like, start that, you feel a little bit intimidated by it, as most people that are new to something is, like, you know, no offense to you guys, it's something that I've definitely had to experience. Uh, I highly recommend trying out Boreas. Again, he is the easiest blade to max out in terms of the affinity charts. And once you do have him, though, it, it's very easy to do things like have very effective heals, tasty snack. He can definitely carry you through the uh, main storyline if you get him in the middle of that. So, yeah, definitely look forward to this one. Highly recommend using him on any team. He just synergizes that well. So anyways, guys, thanks very much for joining me for today's showcase. And next time, we're going to be looking at another special blade. Stay tuned.